بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعاله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الغام وأكرمني بنور الفاء اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين. إن شاء الله from this session we start discussing the ideas which were presented in the first round of Wings of Unity and then published as a book unity of God and unity in God, which is very important uh, project for us. Inshallah, we'll talk about it later. Uh, the book is online. You can read the book online. It's not possible to download, but you can read it online. We have some copies in home, I think. Must be in the library at least. But. Uh, now I'm using this PowerPoint to share with you some of the main ideas in the book. As introduction, first we should know the significance of Tawheed in Islam. We are discussing unity of God and unity in God from Islamic perspective, of course. For us, Tawheed is very important principle. It's not just one of the three principles of religion or one of the five principles of denomination. Tawheed is the principle of the principle, the mother principle. Everything goes back to Tawheed. Even Nubuva goes back to Tawheed. Ma'ad goes back to Tawheed. Ad, Imama, everything goes back to Tawheed. So I have a discussion about what is the difference between Usul al-Din, Usul al-Madhab, and then I say Tawheed is the most <coughs> fundamental principle and make reference to hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he was in Mecca, although he was aware of many problems in that society, in that culture, but he used to say, قُولُوا لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ تُفْلِحُوا Say, which means believe and acknowledge that there is no God but one God, and then you will be happy. You will achieve happiness. Why he didn't say, Qulu la ilaha illallah, and Qulu this, and Qulu that, and bring this action, avoid that action? and then to flahu. Because in his strategic vision, the root of all the problems was going away from Tawheed. Therefore, the solution can only be by returning to Tawheed. If they wholeheartedly believed in Tawheed and practiced Tawheed, other problems also would be solved. So unity of God is a single solution for many, many problems that may exist. Cultural problem, moral problem, social problem, even political problems. All are because of not being true muwahid, not being truly monotheistic.
We have also this hadith Qudsi. Kalimatu la ilaha illallah hisni. Faman dakhila of course, in the book we have given the actual wording which is available in the text, but it's similar to this wording that I mentioned. Kalimatullah ilaha illallah, the word of Tawheed and unity of God is my fortress. And whoever enters my fortress will be saved. So to, we, we don't have several fortress. We have one fortress and this fortress is characterized as fortress of Tawheed. In the city of Neshabur, when Imam Raza was on his way from Medina to Marv, Thousands of people gathered around him and asked him for hadith. They knew his progeny of the Prophet. He is very knowledgeable. They wanted to hear something from him. Imam Raza salam could mention different things about different principles of Islam, different practices of Islam, about morals. He could have talked, for example, even about imama, etc. But he chose to talk about Tawheed. In the famous hadith of Golden Chain, Salsalatul Zahab, he mentioned this, that Kalimatu la ilaha illallah hisni فَمَنْ دَخَلَ حِسْنِي أَمِنَ مِنْ عَضَابِي Then he moved on and then he stopped and said بِشَرْتَهَا وَشُرُوتَهَا وَأَنَا مِنْ شُرُوتَهَا Of course there are conditions for that. Your understanding of who can be your guide and who can be your leader also originate from Tawheed. But we should not put anything in place of Tawheed or next to Tawheed. If we have Tawheed, we may have other things. If we don't have Tawheed, everything else will go wrong. Then I made also reference to Allama Tabatabai's view in Al Mizan. He says that there are different attitudes towards ethics, sometimes based on good consequences and bad consequences. Ethicists try to encourage us to be more ethical, sometimes by reward and punishment. They try to encourage us to be more moral and ethical. But he says, Quran has a kind of unique approach to the knowledge of Allah. He says, this is unique approach, which is based on Tawheed, Quran has an additional approach to akhlaq, which is based on Tawheed. This Tawheed akhlaq helps us to eradicate all the problems, all the vicious traits of character at once. You don't need to fix them one by one. If you are really muwahid, if you are really a servant of God, you will not be jealous. You will not be selfish, you will not be unkind, you will not be unjust, you will not be unfair, etc. Another dimension of Tawheed, or another way of seeing the significance of Tawheed in Islam, is to look at Islamic philosophy. So we talked about Islamic theology, we talked about Islamic ethics, 
In philosophy, for example, if we go to the school of transcendent philosophy, Al-Hikmatul Muta'aliyah of Mullah Sadra, we find that Tawheed is very much center of this philosophy. For example, we have only one reality of existence. Al-Wujudu Haqiqatun Wahida. In transcendent philosophy, unlike prophetic philosophy, there is only one type of existence, one reality of existence, but there are different decrees. And Wajibul Wujud necessary being is the absolute being, and other beings are finite beings, but the being is only one type. There is multiplicity, but multiplicity goes back to unity. Because ma behil ishtarag is the same as ma behil imtiyaz. What unites them is the same as what differentiates. They enjoy it. the same being, but they are different in degrees of being. So this approach gives us a different kind of vision about the whole universe. Plus, the relation between cause and effect, according to Mullah Sadra, is very, very close and intimate. And effect is a matter of belonging and relying on the cause. So we are very much interconnected and all connected with God. If you go to Illuminationist school of philosophy, Hikmatul Ishraq by Mullah, uh, by uh, Sohravardi, Sheikh Ishraq Sohravardi, you see he uses the language of light. And God is light of lights, Nurul Anwar. The Quran says, Allahu Nurul Samawati Wal Ard. Chapter 24, verse 35. Also in chapter 6, verse 1, Allah says, Alhamdulillah, Allati Khalaq as Samawati Wal Ard, Wa Jaila Dhulumati Wal Nur. So you can talk about creation, you can talk about making darkness and light. Allah is light of the lights or the absolute light. Everything else that exists has some degree of light. Darkness is nothing but a less degree of light. We don't have absolute darkness. Nothing is absolutely dark. If it is absolutely dark, it doesn't exist. Because anything that exists is created by God. So it must have some level of light. So, the way we look at the world based on this outlook is again that Allah is the center, Allah is the absolute light who has radiations of light spreading and we are all somewhere standing in these radiations of light we can go closer and get more light and reflect more light another aspect of Tawheed that we find in the Quran and Hadith is that everything is a sign of God we don't have dualism, we don't believe that there is God of goodness and God of badness, Godness, God of light, God of darkness, God of good and God of evil. No. Everything is created by God and everything is a sign of God. Kullu lahu Everything is a sign of God. 
God was a hidden treasure, according to the hadith of hidden treasure, Kanza Mahfi. Allah says, Kuntu Kanza Mahfiyan fa ahbab to an oraf fa khalaq to khalqadekai oraf. So he was a hidden treasure. This hidden treasure has to be known. How he is known through his creatures and through his revelations. So his creatures are ayah, his revelations are also ayah. We have ayat of the book, we have ayat of the nature. Nature is a kind of book whose verses are the creatures. Sanorihim ayatina fil afaq wa fi anfusihim. Hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al-haq. Chapter 41, verse 53. So his signs are in the horizon and inside us. When you see everything as a sign of God, something which is like a piece of art which has God's signature on it, when everything is a manifestation of God, then you have to be very respectful. You cannot destroy trees, you cannot destroy flowers, you cannot destroy insects, because they are manifestations of God, they're creatures by God. Yes, if something is life-threatening and you have to save your life, for example, then for the sake of a higher life, that life can be taken away, but it needs permission from God. We should be sure that God is permitting us to do this. Otherwise, we cannot touch them, we cannot harm them. Another aspect of Tawheed is that he is present everywhere. Because if he was not present everywhere, he was finite. And if he was finite, he was not one. He would be multiple. So, he is present everywhere. And we can find his face or Vajhullah everywhere. Because if Allah had a special direction, he was in a special place or corner, then you could find him only there. But the Quran says, Aynama to Vallu Fathamma Vajhullah, chapter 2, Surah Baqarah, verse 115. Wherever you turn, <coughs> the face of God is there. Face of God is not only for Muslims, it's a concept that you find it in Judaism and Christianity as well. In Psalms 105, verse 4, we find, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face continually. So you should always seek his face. What does it mean, Vajhullah? Allah doesn't have physical body. He doesn't have face, hand, neck. What does it mean? Face of everything is that aspect of it that if you want to have the best encounter, you should turn towards it. If you want the best encounter with a human being, you would encounter his face because eyes and tongues and ears all are here. The best chance of encounter with someone is when you have face to face relation. If you want to face a computer, you turn towards its screen and keyboard. If you want to face a television, you face its screen. If you want to face a fridge, you face its door. So everything has certain aspect or part or dimension that would give you the best encounter with that. When it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he is not limited to any place or time, we can have the best encounter with him 
if we are ready aina ma tuwallu fa thamma batullah if you are in the good mindset and right outlook you can turn to him everywhere of course it's easier to find him in certain places in sacred places for example sacred times but you can find him everywhere because he is not you know hiding behind a wall or you know uh, in a place or in a cave he's everywhere we need to be open we need to be you know ready wajhullah is everywhere then you see those people who are more conscious of god more aware of god like mystics they are in a better position to acknowledge his unity and work for the unity of mankind amirul mu'minin alayhi salam says ma ra'aytu shay'an illa wa qad ra'aytu allah qablahu wa ba'dahu wa ma'ah i have not seen anything unless i have seen god before it and with it and after it so who is arif arif is not the one who can see god somewhere arif is the one who is, who can only see god in other words the one that god uh, is able to see god everywhere wherever he looks god is there is in home God is there. It's outside. God is there. Goes to the park. God is there. Goes to mountain. God is there. Goes to mosque. God is there. Goes to the church. God is there. God is everywhere. Arif cannot find any place free or empty from God. Or answers. in the ayah after ayatun nur which is chapter 24 verse 37 fi buyutin adna allah an turfa' wa yuzkara fiha ismuh yusabbihu lahu fiha bil ghudub wal asal rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillah wa iqama as-salah wa ita'i az-zakah yakhafun yawman tataqallabu fihi al qulub wal asal Allah praises people that continuously glorify and praise God and neither business nor merchandise buying selling trade nothing can make them forget God nothing distracts them from remembrance of God so they are all the time connected and mindful of God then there's a discussion about how to get closer to god about approaching god we need to believe in god and we need to worship god in chapter 51 verse 56 god says ma khalaqtu al jinna wal ins illa liya'budun i didn't create the jinn and humanity except that they may worship me or serve me so we need to act in the way that our life would be a life of service and then this means that we are continuously getting closer and closer to him if we don't serve god we are not free actually serving god makes us free if we don't serve god we would then worship our ego or other people's ego which again requires first worshiping your ego because unless you worship your ego you would not worship others ego afara'ayta man ittaqadha ilahahu hawa have you seen the one who has taken his own lord desires as his god as his lord chapter 25 verse 43 so either god is your ilah or you have some kind of ilah some kind of uh, you know god to worship but it can be then the fake ones like your own ego 
So there are two types of idol worshipping. Some people worship <clears throat> a statue. That's an idol. Some people worship their own desires and Satan. This is also a kind of idol worship. It's not necessarily idol something from, you know, plaster or wood. Anything that demands your full obedience is an idol. Only God who deserves our full obedience is the genuine Lord. So we need to worship God and do everything possible to please Him for our own benefit. He doesn't need that. And about the difference between Ibada and Ubudiyah, between Abed and Abd. Abed is very great worshiping has chosen a life of devotion. But Abd is not just worshipping. Abd is there to please and serve the Moga master. Day and night Abd is Abd. Abed is Abed when he's worshipping. When he's sleeping, he's not Abed. But servant is the one who serves master even when servant is sleeping, is a standby at any time that master needs is going to serve. So to belong to God and being his servant is higher than worshiping God. Worshiping God is not 24 hours, 7 days. But serving is 24 hours, 7 days. And then I have said that when we are servants of God and we have achieved servitude, we can have better chance of working for unity. Because when there is no ego, when there is no selfishness and self-interest, then there is greater chance for working for unity. People with ego cannot work together and be united. People, if there are thousands of people without ego, they can easily work together. Then I have talked about being a container, a channel, a container for receiving God's mercy, God's knowledge, God's wisdom, God's love. Enjoy it and also make it available for others. There's a reference also to a famous hadith from Isa a.s. His disciples, how are you going to ask him, Ya Nabi Allah, man nujalis, O Prophet of God, whom should we choose as our companions? He said, Man yuzakkirukumullahu ru'yatuh, wa yazidu fi ilmikum mantiquh, wa yuraqibukum fil akhirati amaluh. You should choose as your companions people that they remind you of God. When you look at them, they remind you of God. And when they speak, they increase your knowledge. And when you look at their actions, you will be more motivated to work for Akhirah. Some people, when you look at their actions, you are motivated to work for dunya. You see, they only talk about money, car, house, land, you know, gold, and always about dunya, and you see, you are attracted towards dunya. But there are people that you their actions make you more eager to work for akhirah. We can be a sign of God, and we should be, as much as possible, a good sign. 
and we can be a mirror. Mirror is more than just a sign. Mirror is a sign, but also is basically uh, meant to reflect the light of what is in front of you. Ego is an obstacle to unity. This is very important. People who are... Okay, uh, the computer went out of power. Inshallah, we continue after your salat. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen.